So, Monica, okay, Dave, I'm sorry. What did you say? No, no, you're good. What do you think we should go over today that might help you? Because you've done how many demos now? Um, two. I just did two. You just done two, and how did they go? What do you, What do you think? Um, I think my rain made demonstration is pretty good. Um, okay. I think where I kind of trip up at is whenever I do. Um, I guess the 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 vat kill. I think. Uh -huh. Um, I think my issue is, is probably just trying to remember how it is whenever you're doing the harmonica in that portion where you're showing the suction and the airflow and yeah. where you put uh, um, using the little um, cloths where you put right. it at because that's where I've been tripping up at and then no trying problem. to go back and get the customer to see which one like the, the airflow um, is what you need in order for you to be able to clean. Gotcha. Well, okay, I'll cover that. Hey, Crystal Bennett. Hey, you know, double Disney next week. Okay, so double I Disney. Heard, yes, because I All said right. I would do demos Saturday if they needed, and then they said no double demos. I have to come. Go, go there, yeah. All right. So let's work on what you said, Monica. All right, and Ravina to help you also, and and uh, if Shanika can hear me, it'll help her too. Um, but so. I can just say this, that when I, uh, when I do this part of demo, Monica, right, so my thought process is this, why should someone want to use the rainbow over their vacuum, okay? Now, I know it purifies the air, makes the house smell really good, but the reason that someone ought to use a rainbow that has the water in it instead of one that has a filter is because of this part of the demo, you have to be able to explain to them how the rainbow doesn't clog up and, and lose airflow. Okay, so let me kind of show you how, how we get through that. Now I have a simplified version of this and, and maybe if you've seen me do it, you've seen my version. If you've seen Ryan do it, his version's a little different. And I think it's a little bit more complicated, uh, it, especially for a new person to learn, okay? So just let me let me explain to you what I'm getting ready to show the customer, okay? Because I'm talking to you as a dealer. I'm not actually explaining this like I would if I were in a customer's house, okay? So gotcha. the thing you, the thing you've got to understand is the rainbow uses water, and I know you know that. But because it uses water, okay, the air comes in the front and can go through the water and then through the machine and back out. See, there's no filters, okay? Now, when you use a bag or filter vacuum. The same thing happens. The air comes in the front or the bottom. It has to go through a, through the, a filter, okay? And be, because that filter has holes in it, right? Little tiny microscopic holes. Some of the particles are, are big enough that they actually block the hole, okay? So you can imagine, um, you know, uh, when you your heat pump at home, your air conditioner, you have to change those, those filters uh, every you know, month or two months, depends on how much it runs, right? But the reason you have to change is because they come, they become clogged, right? And you know, if, if they, if they're blocked, it's almost like there's a piece of cardboard there instead of a filter. So, you know, your heat pump's not getting any air. So it's not pushing any air out the vents in any of the rooms of your house. And therefore it's not heating and it's not cooling. And eventually it'll burn the motor up in your heat pump, but it, it'll, it'll actually put too much pressure on the, the fan and burn the motor, right? So it's the same exact principle with the vacuum cleaner, right? The air comes in and, and gets the filter clogged up, right? So now there's no way air can come in the bottom of their vacuum cleaner anymore, okay? The beater bar is still turning on the bottom. It still combs the carpet. So it looks like they're actually picking up dirt but actually all it's doing is the beater bar is turning, but there's no air moving, right? And because there's no air moving, there's no dirt being picked up. Well, and there's also no air coming out the exhaust of their vacuum, not much. And so basically what that will do is burn the motor up on their vacuum, all right? But the, I guess the, what we're trying to explain though is because there's no air coming in the bottom of the machine, there's no dirt, no dirt coming in. So if there's no air, there's no dirt coming in, right? So it's not going to pick the dirt up anymore. So the rainbow doesn't do that because it's pulling the air through a liquid, not through a solid that's going to get clogged, right? So that's getting that point across 
is is selling a rainbow. So if yeah, and Michael will tell you he's gone now, but if he's ever been on a demo, I can remember him calling me and saying they're giving me 30 minutes. And I'm gonna I said, Well, what's gonna do? He said, I'm gonna do a mini vac and I'm gonna vacuum a little bit. And I said, Well, that's all I would do too. And you know, I tried to get him to reschedule and come back another day, but the people said, Look, it's now or you ain't coming back and you have 30 minutes, right? Because normally if they're in a hurry and they gotta leave in 30 minutes, you need to reschedule that demo. You don't need to try to do it in 30 minutes. But in this particular case, they were being a little bit rude and they're like, you do it now and you got 30 minutes, right? So he said, look, I'm here. I'm going to burn this one to the ground. I'm going to do a real quick mini vac and I'm going to pull dirt with it um, with them a vacuum and show them all the dirt. And then I'm going to show them the price and I'm going to see what happens. And he sold it, right? But Michael has a really good, uh, what we call mini vac. Okay. So we call it a mini vac because you actually turn the rainbow into a miniature vacuum cleaner that uses a filter. So that's the only reason we even call it a mini vac. But, you know, some offices call it the block test uh, or the airflow test. Okay. So that's showing the customer their vacuum has no airflow and the rainbow does. And it's actually airflow that moves the dirt out of your floor. I mean, so anyway, uh, and the way you think of the way a vacuum cleaner works is like this. If it's fall, and the leaves have fallen and they're all over the ground outside and there's no wind stirring, then we know those leaves will just lay there, right? They won't go anywhere, they don't move, all right? But when the wind blows, we know that the leaves will go with the wind. We've seen that happen where the wind, a big gust of wind, it takes all these leaves across your yard and into the neighbor's yard or vice versa. But see, that's actually how a vacuum works is that air movement gets the dirt caught up in it. And now you have dirt and air coming in the bottom of a vacuum. So without air coming in, no dirt can come in. It's just, um, it, it's really simple. And so you have to have maximum air movement with a vacuum, right? So the rainbow has maximum air movement all the time because there's nothing here to get stopped up. Now, I know the rainbow has a filter in the back, but remember this, I don't even say anything about the filter in the back, number one, but if they were to ask me, does that have a filter, I will show them it has a filter in the back, but I'm real, real clear when I explain to them that the water traps all of the dirt. The only reason there's a filter in the back is because the rainbow has another level of filtration that no other vacuum has, it will filter down to three tenths of a micron. So it will filter down to a virus. Bacteria and viruses can be trapped by the filter in the back, okay? Now dirt stops at the water. Now this is real important for them to understand that the filter on the back of the rainbow never sees any dirt. So it never gets clogged. That's very important that they understand. Yes, the rainbow has a filter, but no, it never gets any dirt on it like your vacuum cleaner does, okay? So that's why to keep things simple, I usually don't even mention the filter in the back, okay? Unless they were to ask me, does the rainbow have a filter? Then I will say, well, it does, and let me explain why. It's not there to catch any dirt because the dirt gets trapped in the water. The only thing that gets to the back filter is your bacteria and viruses. It'll filter down to three tenths of a micron. So I had a lady called me and she had popcorn ceiling in her house and she recently had that removed or actually she removed it, which was weird, right? But anyway, I guess she's a, a do-it-yourselfer, right? So she removed that and she says, then I got the worrying that it had asbestos in it. I got it tested and it has asbestos in it. She said, she called us. She says, will the rainbow remove asbestos? I said, I don't know. And I'm not going to answer that without calling someone. So I called the manufacturer and I spoke to Mark. He's the head of engineering. And Mark explained to me that the EPA, all they say is, a HEPA filter that filters down to three tenths of a micron is what they recommend to use to clean up asbestos. Okay. And the rainbow does that, he said. So I called her back and I said, yes, is the answer to your question. 
and she actually bought a rainbow. I think it was Crystal that went out, right? Or no, it was Caroline, I'm sorry. So anyway, um, so, okay. So you got to understand the concept, right? The reason that their house is dirty is because they use a vacuum cleaner with a stopped up filter. It's that simple, right? The reason their house is filthy is because their vacuum cleaner has no air movement, okay? And it has no air movement because the filters are clogged, right? And they never clean the filters. In fact, most customers don't even know their vacuum cleaner has a filter. They it's take clogged. the cup. Yeah, they take it out and they dump the cup and they put the cup back in and they think they've they've done everything they need to do for their vacuum, but they need to replace the filters, right? Well, because the filters clog up immediately, they could never change the filters often enough, right? So this is this is this is a big selling point of our demo, right? So you if if you understand and then you can get that information across to the customer, now they're educated on why the rainbow uses water, and now they understand why they need a rainbow versus their vacuum, right? I have had dealers call me at the end of a demo and the customer would say to me, you know, I like the rainbow, but the only difference I see is with yours, the dirt's going in the water and with mine, it's going into the, the cup. That's the only difference I really see, okay? So yes, that is the difference, but they got to understand why the water's in the rainbow. Why is the dirt going in the water? Why did we not put a filter and a cup on the rainbow, right? So they have to understand. So obviously that dealer did not do a good job with the minivac. Okay, so super simple, all right? So when you get started, all I do is I'm gonna vacuum with their vacuum 52 times over at the doorway. Then I'm gonna hook the rainbow up with this piece called the visualizer with two cloths right here. And I hope you know that when you use the visualizer, you only need to cover up the rainbow logo. Don't cover up this big hole. So you want to put this right here and close it. Put two cloths, right? And close it up. Now, this actually replaces one of the two pipes that goes to the, the carpet sweeper. You can put it on the lower pipe or you can put it on the top pipe. I don't care. In this case, I'm going to put it in the top. So I'm going to take the first one out and take it off. And now I'm going to put the visualizer, which has a pipe, see? Okay, I'm gonna put it in place of that pipe. So now it's a, it's a normal one. But I do explain to my customer that they don't, they don't have this when they buy a rainbow, okay? This is just for me to demonstrate the rainbow to you tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. This is not something that comes with the rainbow, okay? This is just for my demonstration. And you don't have to use the cloths, okay? Again, that's just for my demonstration, right? Now you have to point that out or some customers will think they have to get cloths you know, for the rainbow, right? So seriously, I've had customers think that. So then just hook your rainbow in and now we're gonna vacuum the same spot with the rainbow that they just vacuumed with their vacuum, right? Now I'm gonna get a lot of dirt. Let me just get a little dirt real quick if I can. We don't have a lot of dirt in here. I just wanna clog it up real quick so I can show you. And by the way, you're only gonna make about five strokes with the rainbow, okay, behind their vacuum, right? You just wanna do a couple strokes. It's usually enough to get it super, super dirty, as you can see right now, it's dirty, all right? So what I like to do is I like to take the dirt off, right? And of course it makes the neat little rainbow logo, which is pretty cool, right? But we wanna take this dirt and we want to put it, so you have this box right here that the power sweeper this attachment right here was in. So when you unpacked it, this this now empty, right? So I like to take this box and I like to open it up. And I like to take the stuff out of it, just maybe throw it in my demo kit for now. And I take this empty box and I lay it in her lap. So now the customer's sitting there with this in their lap. And now I'm gonna take this dirt and I'm gonna kind of dump it out in a pile here in the, in the bottom of the box, right? And then, I'm gonna let them tell, ask them to feel that. And I have them feel the grit. And I say, what does that feel like to you? And they'll say, it feels like sand. And I say, well, that's exactly what it is, right? And I wanna show you something about sand, right? And then you're gonna grab one of your fragrance bottles and right here in between the label, there's this piece of uh, clear 
plastic and I'll just, I'll let them feel that it's smooth, but then I'll take it and I'll grind it in that grit. Then I'll show them what that grit actually did to the bottle. Can y'all see how scratched that is? Right, see how rough it is yeah. now? Right, and I, I let them feel that. And I say, so what did that? Well, it's that dirt, okay? See, every grain of sand has 34 cutting edges on it, like a diamond does, right? So, you know, they glue that sand down to paper, uh, Steve, you know, if I'm, if I'm showing a husband and a wife, I'll ask the husband, I say, they glue that sand to paper, and what do they make out of sand when they glue it to paper? What is it called? It's called, and they'll say sandpaper, exactly. So what is sandpaper? What is the purpose of it? The purpose is an abrasive, so you can scrub it, and it will actually rip the finish off. Or if, it, if the sand is fine enough, it will actually smooth the surface out. But either way, sand is an abrasive, all right? So the reason I'm talking to you about this is I just rubbed that bottle real lightly, and you saw how it scratched it. Could you imagine having that sand in our floor and then our body, our, the weight of our body pushing on that, right? So let me kind of explain what that does. And I'm going to grab the cloth again and I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to roll this. Check this out. I roll it and you can see now it's actually carpet fiber, okay? And then I explain to them that the reason we have carpet fiber being picked up is because the grit's cutting it. Every time you walk across your carpet, because there's grit in it, it's actually grinding and cutting the carpet fibers. And that's what causes a pathway down the hallway, or can you see right here in front of y'all's couch, how your carpet looks a little worn? And I'll actually say that. Do you see right here how your rug's starting to get worn? The reason that it's worn is because that grit is literally cutting it, right? So anyone that manufactures sales or installs carpet, manufactures, sales or installs carpet, will tell you that grit is the number one enemy of carpet and hardwoods, by the way, right? And you can see right here, it says one grain of sand, I said 34, has 36 cutting edges, I'm sorry. And it says that, um, um, that the rainbow, the, the, the use of a correct vacuum cleaner can extend the life of your carpeting. And that's because, and that's from the Carpet and Rug Institute, by the way, but that's because the dirt, sand, and grit cuts, right? Now, I know whenever I saw that, now this is my lead in, Monica, to the part of the demo you wanted me to actually do, okay? So I've showed you more, but I think, I don't want to start there because I want you to, I wanted to lead into it. I wanted you to see how you go into it, right? Because I had people say all the time, how do you transition so yeah, one part of the demo is going to lead to the next, right? So I said, let me show you why your vacuum actually didn't get that dirt up. I mean, because if you think about it, you vacuum 52 times and all that dirt was still there. So kind of let me explain why, right? And then you're going to just simply grab the hose. It's still hooked to the rainbow, right? And then you're going to say, in order to do that, I'm going to turn the rainbow into your vacuum cleaner. Look, and what was it that you have, Monica? You had a, uh, did you have a Eureka, a Bissell, Hoover? What did you trade in? What did you have? A Bissell. Okay, so I'm going to turn the rainbow into a Bissell like you're using. That's what I would say, okay? So we said a few minutes ago that all vacuum cleaners have four parts. They all have to have an intake, a motor, a bagger, filter, and an exhaust. So if I'm going to build a mini Bissell, I'm going to need an intake, all right? So right here, I have this little tool. And this is in my demo case. So this is not the upholstery brush that comes with the rainbow. This is one that's in your demo bag, in your, in your uh, backpack, all right? So Hi. say I, I've got the little intake right here. And I always say, you see that R? Okay, we need you to pretend that that's a B for Bissell, okay? Because we're actually making a miniature Bissell here, right? So that's the front of your vacuum cleaner. This is your intake. This is what we're gonna vacuum with, right? Second thing we're gonna need is a motor. So the, we're going to use the rainbow motor to represent your Bissell motor. In fact, right here where this is an R, I want you to pretend that's a B for Bissell because this is going to be our Bissell motor, right? The third thing we're going to need is a bag or a filter, right? Now your machine uses filters, so we're going to need a filter. So we're going to put our filter, and I've got another one of these uh, black cloths. I like using the long ones here, right? So I'm going to grab a black cloth, just one, 
And then I'm going to simply, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to tuck it into the end of the hose. I'm going to literally tuck this into the end of the hose. So I took the end of the hose, I laid it over it, and I'm going to tuck it about an inch deep or knuckle deep, right? I'm going to make it about an inch deep or knuckle deep. See that? I can stick my finger about an inch deep or about a knuckle deep in the hose, right? Then I'm going to put my intake on to hold it, right? I can't just can't find the intake anymore right here. Sorry. Okay. So right now we have our intake, we have our motor, and we have our bagger filter right here. Okay. See the bagger filter right here hanging out? All right. So we have our intake, our motor, and our bagger filter, right? What is the fourth thing we said we need? An exhaust, right? So let's 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 make this down here. This is going to be your exhaust, right? So I open this up and I grab two more long cloths, right? And what am I going to do with those two more long cloths? Man, I know I poured a bunch of cloths out. I just don't want to Put do them in the water. Crazy. Right. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wet them. I'm gonna wet two cloths, right? So one is cloths. for our lungs and one is for um the dirt. One's gonna be their lungs. So okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say now, who does the vacuum in here? Steve, you or Monica? And she and Steve would say Monica does it. Okay. All right, so Monica, this is gonna be your lungs, right? So I take the cloth out of the water. You can take the water out if you want, dip it. And then I wring them out. I say, so these are gonna represent your lungs, right? So our lungs are wet and they're inside of our body, right? So everything we breathe goes down to our wet lungs, right? So we're gonna put our lungs right here. And then I'm gonna show you where I put this. Right here on this bucket, on the bowl. See, there's two openings, a big one, which we're not gonna use, and then this little oval one. So I'm going to literally lay the black cloth on the over hole, oval hole. So I'm going to literally cover up one of the holes, the oval one, okay? And then I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to say that this is going to be your lungs using your Bissell. And then we're going to close this, right? Now back here on the back, we're going to put what? We're going to put the rainbow on, okay? So I'm going to take the back door off the back of the rainbow, and I'm going to take the other wet cloth, I'm going to put it right here. Now, what if I had just sold Monica's sister a rainbow? I would say, well, Monica, this is your sister's lung since she actually owns a rainbow, right? Or this is your parents' lungs if they bought one, or this is my lungs since we own a rainbow. You can say that. So I literally put the black cloth over the inside of the back door, and I kind of hook. There's some holes in the cloth, so you kind of hook them on those little hooks. Anyway, so I just literally put the back door back on now, right? And we know this one's going to end up being clean, but still do it anyway. All right. So right now we have a brand new, what do we have? We have a brand new what? We have a brand new, help me out, and brand bissel. new what? Bissel. No, bissel. no, bissel. no, brand new what? Mini vac. What was this? You... Lime. I know That's we have our intake, and I know we have our motor, and we have our bagger filter, and we have an exhaust. So, but we, intake. so we have a brand new filter in our Bissell. So we That's went to Walmart, and we bought a $30 set of filters and replaced them in that Bissell over there, in your Bissell. So that's why I have a new filter, because it's a brand new filter, right? Okay, so with a brand new filter in that vacuum that you're using, I want to show you that abyssal is going to have good suction, right? So I turn it on and I stick it to my arm, right? And then I stick it to her arm and I stick it to his arm, right? Now don't do this. If they stick their hand out to feel the suction and they do that, you, you gotta say, no, no, I need to stick this to your arm. So stick it to their arm so they can see it and feel it, the power, right? So we have good suction. So let both of them feel that, right? Then I like to say, but I want to talk to you about something that no other vacuum cleaner company ever talks about, and that is airflow, all right? Airflow. So listen to this noise when I stick my fingers in here, okay? And then I turn it on, and I stick my fingers in, and I make that sound, right? And then I let them stick their fingers in, and it makes the same sound, right? And I say, so that's air flowing by your fingers. Do you agree? So like if you were driving down the road in your car and you stuck your window, your hand out the window, you would hear a similar sound. That's air going by your hand. It's the same thing. 
that's air flowing into the rainbow, okay? So we have two things. We have suction and we have air flow, two different things, okay? Now, once I got my customer understanding suction and airflow are two different things, now I say, hey, we're going to use a harmonica to measure the amount of airflow, right? So uh, here, here, Monica, you hold this, okay? So I got Monica holding the harmonica. All right, anyway, so I got <laughs> Monica holding the harmonica. All right, so I say, yeah. guys, yeah, I love it. So I say, let's, let's check the airflow and hope she's holding this and we'll, it'll blow, right? So I hold, she's holding that. And I say, so right now with a clean filter with a new what? A uh, filter. filter. A new filter. With a clean filter, we have good what? Airflow. Air and I make, Mo I, I make Monica say it. I say, Monica, we have good what? And she'll say airflow. Exactly. But I say, uh, Steve, we didn't buy a vacuum cleaner to play a harmonica, did we? We bought it to pick up dirt. So I'm going to let you just check our cleaning ability. So I'm going to take one of these black cloths and I'm going to lay it in Steve's hand. So Steve is literally sitting in front of me with his hand out and a black cloth sitting in his hand like this, okay? And then I'm going to turn the rainbow on, and I'm going to show him that it has good cleaning ability, Suction. right? It picks it right up, okay? So there's, there's three things we have. We have good suction, we have good airflow, and Steve, we had good cleaning ability. Do you agree? Picked up good, right? And I hand the cloth back to him. See, all you gotta do is take this off, take the intake off, the cloth is still here, and then I just hand him back the cloth, right? So now he's still holding the cloth, she's still holding the harmonica, and I've got a brand new filter, and I say, now we know with a clean filter, we have suction, airflow, and cleaning ability. But let me show you what happens after you start to clean with a regular vacuum, right? So can I vacuum that couch cushion? Would you count the 15 seconds? So I always have them count the 15 and I'll vacuum the couch, okay? So I'm gonna vacuum the floor since they have leather here, right? So I'm gonna vacuum the floor. I'm listening for the motor to rev up. So you actually hear the motor rev. When the motor's rev, you know the filter's clogged, okay? So after 15 seconds, she stops me. And I say, okay. So we no longer have a new filter, we have a dirty filter, all right? So let's see how a Vistel cleans with a dirty filter, right? First of all, let's check our suction. And then I let it, it's still got suction. Feel this, Steve. Feel this, Monica, all right? Still got plenty of suction, right? So just let me ask you a question, Steve. Is it gonna pick the cloth up out of your hand? And you know what Steve's gonna say? Well, yeah, it's going to pick the cloth up. It's got tons of suction. And then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go all the way down to it, and it's not going to lift the cloth. See that? It won't pick the cloth up anymore. Why won't it pick the cloth up? And then I say, Monica, let's check our airflow. And then it doesn't blow the harmonica. And I say, so, guys, what do you think happened? Why did we lose our airflow and our cleaning ability? And she'll say, well, the bag is full, you know, or, or it's full, right? Now, I mean, that is the most common answer to when I ask, what do you think happened? And they'll say it's full, right? Because they've cleaned before and, you know, when their bag or filter got full, it didn't pick up as good. And they know. So anyway, I say, guys, you know, the weird thing is it's not anywhere near full. So let me just show you, right? And I'll take this off and then I will show them down in, and it's hard to see. I don't have good color or uh, brightness here. But I'll show them that it's nowhere near full. But I'll ask them to look inside, and you know what they'll usually say? Oh, it's clogged. And I say, exactly right. It's not full. It's just clogged, right? And um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Can you see the dirt down in? Yes. Okay, I say, now let me look at those holes. Would you agree that they're clogged? And, and Mr. and Mrs. Jones will say, yeah, they're clogged up. I say, exactly, all right? So because they're clogged, all right, that creates a problem. It creates a problem in that air can't go through the vacuum cleaner anymore because the filter clogged, right? And it doesn't pick up dirt any longer. Now, how long did I vacuum with my miniature Bissell? And she'll say 15 seconds. I'll say, right. See, 15 seconds of my little miniature version 
is meant to represent 15 minutes with your vacuum. See, a university in New York did research on over 300 different brands of bag and filter vacuums. They found that after 15 minutes of start, when you start using a clean filter, it cleans with 100% airflow, cleans good. But after about 15 minutes, it drops to about half. Can you see how it continues to drop? After about 15 minutes, you lose about 45 to 50% of the cleaning ability with a regular vacuum because it gets clogged up, okay? Now, so I'm gonna ask you a silly question. Have you ever changed the filters on your Bissell, Monica? And she's gonna say, no, I didn't even know it had filters. So you've never changed them. How long have you had your vacuum? And she'll say, I've had it about two years. And I say, listen, I appreciate you being honest with me, Monica, but do you mind if I'm honest with you? I'm, I'm, you haven't actually cleaned your home good in almost two years. Because you got to understand when you bought your vacuum and you brought your machine in here and you vacuumed the living room, by the time you got over there to the hallway or down the hall to the bedroom, the filter inside the Bissell was already coated with a thin coating of, of, of dirt that clogged it. Okay. And, and, it has, and, it, and it never had any more airflow from two years ago, it lost its airflow two years ago, right? Now, sometimes Monica, I'll go in a home and they think, you know what, Jay, I'm glad you explained us that we need to change our filters because we're gonna go down to Walmart tomorrow and we're gonna buy a brand new set of filters for our vacuum. And, and, and Monica, that's great. The problem is, as soon as you spend that $30 and you put it inside the Bissell, you change them, and you vacuum this room we're in, right? By the time you got down the hall and down to the bedroom again, it's clogged up again. See, after 15 minutes, all bag and filter vacuum cleaners lose 45 to 50 percent of their cleaning ability after 15 minutes of using a clean filter. Okay, now, um, so does that is that pretty clear? Yes, it is. Yes, you explained so that, it good. That's how you want to explain it. Now, what I want to do one more time is I want to take the cloth out. Now, if you'll notice, I explained all that with the cloth still in the end of the pipe. The reason I left it in the pipe as I was explaining it was I want them to see that there's very little dirt here, but it's enough dirt that it clogged the holes, right? I mean, there's not a lot of dirt, there, but it clogged. And you know why there's not a lot of dirt? Because as soon as it got clogged, what did the vacuum stop doing? Suction. Stop it, it stopped what? Stopped picking up, didn't it? Because it, because it, now, it's a pop quiz. It lost its suction. Did it lose its airflow or did it lose its cleaning ability? Did it, it lost two of the three. What did it not lose? Suction. It didn't it use suction. It still well, had suction. suction. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if you stuck it to your arm, like I did after it was clogged, if you remember, after it was clogged, I stuck it to my arm. I stuck it to his arm. I stuck it to her arm. And I proved that it still feels like it's picking up. But in actuality, then I had him hold the cloth out and I showed him that it wouldn't even lift the cloth, right? So I said, so why is it, it's got suction. So you think it's still picking up but why is it not picking up? And then I checked the airflow and it didn't blow the harmonica. Then I took the end off and I explained to them why it didn't have air movement anymore was because a thin coating of dirt had clogged all the holes. And then I went into, I vacuumed 15 seconds with my miniature version. And that actually represent, represents 15 minutes, minutes with your vacuum, right? And a university in New York did research and found that after 15 minutes of using a bag or filter vacuum, they all lose 45 to 50% of their cleaning ability. In other words, you're doing half of what you were doing when the filter was new, right? Then I say, hey, let me ask you a question. When's the last time you've ever changed your filters? And they say, I didn't even know it had filters, right? Whatever, I say, well, that's what most people say because I don't want them to feel embarrassed I say, that's what we said. We didn't know they had them either, right? But 
So, so, and you've had your bank account how long? And she says, well, I've had it a year. I say, so what you just told me is, and don't get mad at me. I, you know, I'm not saying you're a bad housekeeper, but you actually haven't vacuumed your home good in over a year. See, because you got to remember when you brought that machine home from the store and you vacuumed this room we're in, by the time you got to the hallway or down the hall to the bedroom, your machine had already clogged up and already lost half its cleaning ability. And then you've been using that same stopped up filter for one year. That's why we're going to get a lot of dirt out tonight. It's not because you haven't been vacuuming. It's because your machine's not been cleaning. It's not because you've not been vacuuming. It's because your machine's not been cleaning. So you got to make sure that you're not, that you, they understand you're not picking on them, your, your cleaning habit. We're picking on their cleaning equipment. And we're not even picking on the equipment. We're talking about the filters. It's not that you have a bad vacuum cleaner. Bissell's a good vacuum. The problem is it uses a filter and filters clog up so quickly that no vacuum cleaner with a filter can clean longer than about 15 minutes. So you got to make sure they get that point. Now the rest of the demo, all the dirt you pick up, you can explain to them, why did I get all this dirt out of your furniture is because your vacuum has no airflow. Why are we getting all, all this dirt off your hardwood? Because remember, your filters are clogged, you know? So you can just keep referring to that and it's a softer way to sell a rainbow and they don't get offended because they think you're, you're insinuating that they're not a good housekeeper, right? It's not you, it's the fact that your vacuum cleaner uses a filter and the filter's clogged. And so if you can ever get where you can do a good job with the mini vac, I promise you, and you can see now just real quick why Michael, when he said, I got 30 minutes, I'm going to do a mini vac, which is this. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to vacuum a little bit and, and show them the dirt. And then I'm going to have to show them the price. And, you know, and so if, if, if you had 30 minutes to do one, which would be really, really bad. I mean, can you see why this would be the one part that you'd want to show? Because this separates the rainbow from all other machines. If they didn't get a rainbow from you tonight and they, and, and, and they went, I mean, and they went and bought any other vacuum cleaner. What would they be buying? The same thing they already got, a filter vacuum cleaner, right? In fact, I, I, I always tell my customers, I say, if you're, if you're thinking, well, I'm going to go get a Bissell, or I'm going to go get a Shark, or I'm going to go to get a Kirby, you know what you actually need to do? You need to go to Walmart and buy a set of filters for your vacuum cleaner and change them. Because you got to understand something, with a brand new set of filters in that Bissell, that Bissell will clean just as good as the rainbow. But only for 15, for 15 minutes. For 15 minutes. That's the, that's the point. Can you understand, Raven, you're, you're selling them softly. You're, you're softly selling them, right? You're not like high pressuring them. You're not saying anything negative about their vacuum. You're explaining that all bag and filter vacuum cleaners clog up. And that's, that's why Rainbow decided not to use a bag or filter as the primary filtration method. They use the water, right? So see, the water doesn't get clogged up. This water could be black or it could be clear. As long as it's wet, it's not gonna clog. Now, as long if it ever got to where it was just complete dirt, then yeah, it, you, air couldn't go through. Does that make sense? See, air has to travel through, right? And so um, I've always said, and don't take this wrong, but I've always said that uh, I feel like men who are a little bit more mechanically minded do a better job of, of explaining this. Now, now, now I got to take that back because I've had some men that did a bad job explaining it. I've had some women that did a, a fantastic job, right? And, but here's the thing. Men have a struggle explaining the, the smell part and the, the way it makes your house feel and how much cleaner the environment in your home feels, right? Men have a hard time with that. Women are so much better at that, right? So all I would say, though, when I say that is to say, look, that is good and that is an advantage of the rainbow, but, but also get good at this part that I just showed you because this will help you convince the man that the rainbow is a, is, makes sense. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's $3,000, but it's the only way I'm going to get my house clean. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, 
yeah, I guess I need to do that, right? And then it's free on top of all of that. So, you know, it's a no-brainer. It's free and it works. So anyway, all right. So there's our hour. Hour's up. Hope it helped everybody. Uh, appreciate everybody joining and logging in. And um, gosh, if you have any questions, just call me. I mean, the best thing to do to learn this stuff, and, and look, I know I didn't send the mass text out early enough, but is to come to the office and sit in this chair right here and let me and you do the parts of the demo together. And that way, when you go on a demo, listen to this real quick, I'm gonna let you go. So I've got to give a little presentation on Saturday at our sales rally, okay? So I, I cheated today, okay? I, I, I had a, uh, a uh, we had a, a group sales director meeting today and I said, okay guys, you're gonna listen to my speech. We're, we're doing my speech today, right? I said, so, so here we go, right? And I did my presentation for them, right? And so, uh, you know, coming here and, and, and doing, I feel so much better now about doing my Saturday presentation because I've already done a run through with live participants, right? And I just, I, I, I was watching their reaction to things I was saying, things I need to emphasize. I could tell when they grabbed their pen, they started writing it down. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, I need to, I need to, I need to really stress that, you know, so look, I mean, coming here and let's role playing and you doing this is only going to give you confidence and confidence overcomes the fear that you have of going to do a demo. So I'm sure that if you have fear, Shanika, you did that, like you came and got certified and it might've even been a week or two before you went and did one and, or maybe not, I, I could be wrong, but you know, and so, you know, that in that two weeks, you start, you start second guessing can I do this oh my god I'm nervous you know right, I know Mike right. to Mike told me he said I almost threw up in the customer's bushes when I arrived at my very first demo ever uh you know he was that nervous about it right but so and I know you were still nervous in it Shanika but but guess what when you got in there and you started talking and you realized these people don't know what I'm supposed to do okay they right. don't know what's right and what's wrong somebody told me yes. years ago he said jay it's not that your people have to learn every time you do a meeting it's that they have to think they did they have to think they learned something okay so look the customer doesn't know what you're supposed to do just if worse come to worse take a lot of the black cloth take that little visualizer thing put some black cloth in grab the dusting brush and vacuum a lampshade and show them the dirt. Put another cloth in, put another tool on, vacuum something else, show them the dirt. I mean, one thing is for sure, showing people dirt sells the rainbow, okay? So if worse come to worse and you forget all of what I've shown you today, just remember, if you can pull about 30 black cloths, and, I, and I'm gonna show you this and we're gonna be done. I love what Ryan did here. Ryan took the box, you see the brown box there sitting there on its side, right? So what, what uh, we train people to do is at the beginning of the demo is to take 30 black cloths, 30 of them, brand new clean cloths and lay them out on that box. So when you first start, there's a weird looking brown box sitting over here with 30 black cloths laying on it side by side. I mean, they're, understand they're laid side by side. I'll show you. They're just They're laying them side by side, right? One by one right? 30 of them, okay? So I'm not going to lay 30 out. I'm going to lay about uh, 10 or 15 here, right? So, and I know y'all can't see this, but I'm, I'm going to turn the camera. So we're going to lay all these cloths out at the beginning of the demo, right? And so what that tells me is, okay, when I get done with this demo, all of those cloths need to have dirt on them, okay? I don't know where I'm going to find the dirt, if it's off the lampshade, the deer head, the picture frame, or uh, you know, the mini blinds or the carpet, the hardwood, the tile, but we're going to have 30 cloths laid out by the end of that demo, right? Sorry, I'm not giving this. Am I, am I, so all of those are going to be dirty, but when I first start, they're all clean, right? So what that does is that actually, that tells me, and when I need a cloth, I grab it off the box, right? And then when I get done with it and it's dirty, I lay it on the box in place of where it was, right? Then I grab another clean cloth. So what that tells me is, I'm going to pull 30 cloths. There's an old saying in this business that every cloth you pull is worth $100. Since the rainbow sells for $3,000, you better pull 30. Does that make sense? 
because every time you pull a black cloth, you're building $100 value in the customer's mind. So if I have 30 of those black cloths done when I get done, the, the likelihood that they can see paying 3000 but remember, it's going to be free. But even if they had to pay for it, they can justify that because I've pulled enough dirt that I've grossed them out and I've got them scratching a little bit, itching, right? Oh my God, my house is filthy, right? So if you can do that to someone, you got a better chance of taking them where you need to go, which is the yes, right? So, all right, guys, thank you all so much. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll do this again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.